Welcome back, boxing fans, to another great show with Sean on boxing. So I saw people being critical of Ring Magazine's current rankings, and, and this just shows you the sensitivity some boxing fans have. Because primarily the people that are upset by this list are people that predominantly support only black American fighters. And their beef is that there's not enough black American fighters and that a black American fighter isn't on top of the list. And primarily that's their issue. Yet these same individuals will come out and say that pound for pound lists are subjective. Yeah, so if it's subjective, why are you in your feelings? Why are you so emotionally charged just because the list ain't black enough for you? The reality is people like this, they make their lists and it's all based on biased narrative that they consistently push. Yet then they have a problem with Ring Magazine, blame it on Oscar. Yet Ring Magazine is a panel of people that vote for their, like they give their list. And every position gets a point, the point system scored. And then they add all these points up, accumulative. And then whoever has the most points ends up being the guy that's number one on the list and so on and so forth. Right until you get to the 10th. And then you have underneath of that usually you know, top few contenders. So in this case, it would be like Shakur, probably Lomachenko, uh, maybe Ken Shiro, right? Three potential guys, maybe even a David Benavidez, even though I don't think he should really be considered a pound for pound fighter at this time, because he just hasn't done anything to earn that. And, and then you look at the top 10 guys on the list, and they're all guys that justifiably deserve to be on the list, right? So what's the issue? What's the real problem? Because it's not the people on the list. Like somebody says, this whole list needs to be reworked. What he means is the black American guys on the list have to be moved higher and other guys need to move, be moved lower. That's what he means by reworking it. But yet, let's think about this list. Currently, I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but we'll see when I post it. It was either Usyk or, or Anui, who's number one, above Bud Crawford, who I think is number three on this list. And in truth, it doesn't matter which of these three fighters you have at number one, because Usyk, Crawford, and Anui are all two weight undisputed champions. They all are people who've done fantastic things in the sport. The one negative towards Bud Crawford is that he's been the most inactive out of all three of them. So he could lose some position because of that inactivity lowers you on pound for pound lists. Of course, people that try to push these lists and always have a black American fighter at number one, they don't care about inactivity and things of that nature. They just think a guy becomes number one and he stays at number one until somehow he gets beat or somebody overlaps him. But yet that's not how pound for pound lists are, right? It's based on what have you done for me lately? How active have you been doing? Uh, how impressive have you been in the process? Um, and, and, you know, that's why on my list I have Usyk number one. Because when you think about Usyk overcoming a guy as big as Tyson Fury, who had well over 40 pounds in weight advantage over him, longer reach, bigger size advantage, had all the advantages, yet Usyk was still able to beat him, right? This is something no other fighter in, in lower weight divisions will ever have to do. Because Crawford and Anui will never have to fight a guy who's 40, 40 pounds or 50 pounds heavier than them on fight night. It just won't happen. Uh, that's why I have Usyk number one. But then you have Bud Crawford and Anui or Anui and Bud Crawford. I don't think there's an issue unless you're all about race. And then I understand why it's an issue for you. But outside of that, there should be no issue. Then you have Better Beev and Bivol who... <laughs> justifiably deserve to be on this list, specifically better be at number four, because he just beat Dimitri Bivol, a pound for pound fighter, a guy who just beat Zerto and Canelo Alvarez not that long ago. Um, and then you go on and you beat him to become undisputed at 168 pounds, or sorry, 175 pounds. You deserve to be on the top four. And then Bivol is there because he barely lost. And his win against a pound for pound fighter in Canelo definitely elevates him to this position. Canelo is at number six. And then I think Bam Rodriguez was number seven. Uh, Tank Davis was eight. Uh, 
Junto Nakatani was nine and Devin Haney was 10. I saw some people moaning and groaning about how can Devin Haney be listed below Junto Nakatani. Well, Junto is a three weight world champion. Devin Haney is a two weight world champion. Yes, he became undisputed, that's great. But that was still just done at one weight division. Junta Nakatani has been through three, and the talk is he's going to be moving up to his fourth division to take on undisputed champion Anui, right? <laughs> that That is super impressive because there's not many fighters that are taking that level of competition. For Devin Haney, how do you put him above Junto based on his Ryan Garcia fight? I know it doesn't count as a loss, but he still got dropped by the same punch three or four times. He still looked vulnerable, right? So it'd be hard to put this man uh, above a guy like Junta Nakatani, who's been one of the most dominant fighters in 2024 and 23. Dominant, scoring sensational fucking knockouts and doing it in, in a big fashion, right? Where he's like literally in the conversation for knockouts of the year. But still, once again, semantics. Once again, being upset, not because of the fighters themselves, but the fact that uh, a Japanese fighter is ranked above the black fighter. And, you know, the black fighter should be ranked above him. And as far as Tank, should Tank be ranked above Bam Rodriguez? I, I mean, on my list, it it's close. I think I have Tank Davis above Bam, but, but it could go either way. Bam Rodriguez is literally a two-weight world champion. Uh, he's unified titles. Uh, Tank Davis is two-weight world champion. He's never unified champions, right? So already Bam Rodriguez, who's five years younger than him, has already accomplished more than Tank Davis in lesser time. And, of course, had some big names on his resume. His last victory against Juan Francisco Estrada, a future Hall of Famer, that's a better win than any win Tank Davis has. Yes, it's a much better win than Petraza because going into the Petraza-Tank Davis fight, Petraza hadn't beaten any pound-for-pound pound, uh, future Hall of Famer. None. And as far as Leo Santa Cruz, Leo Santa Cruz wasn't considered a pound-for-pound pound fighter at that time. He wasn't coming off of a career best victory, not in the fashion that Estrada was. Estrada had just beaten Roman Gonzalez in the most dominant uh, fight out of the three they were involved in, right? And that was a huge statement win because obviously the other two fights previously were very competitive. But the third fight, he pretty much uh, dominated that fight. And, you know, that was obviously a big, big victory for him. And many people had him on the pound for pound list after that victory. Uh, obviously, being out of the ring for more than a year, going to the Bam Rodriguez fight, he probably wasn't on that list because of inactivity. But you could see Bam beating him coming off of a Sonny Edwards victory for unification. Those are significant fights. Things that Tank Davis has never done. If you want to squabble, I mean, fine, you could put Tank Davis above Bam Rodriguez, but in actual accomplishments and, you know, big fights, Tank Davis didn't do as much as Bam Rodriguez. And if we're arguing, why are we arguing? Because they're both American. So, again, this is all comes down to color, race, because it has nothing to do with reality. I can tell you exactly why Bam should be ranked higher. Can you tell me? <laughs> Outside of a racial narrative, can you justify why Tank Davis deserves to be above Bam Rodriguez? I don't think you can, but you can try. So you can see, this list is great. There's, there's nobody on this list, literally, that doesn't belong on this list. If you want to squabble about where people are, I mean, you can do that with every single pound-for-pound pound list in existence. It just is what it is. But there's no name that's missing from this list, right? Literally. Uh, and if there is, tell me who it is. Who do you think deserves to be on this top 10 that currently isn't? Because I don't know who it is. But, you know, feel free to leave in the comment section below who you think should be on this list. Um, but outside of the position, what's the real beef? I, I mean, we know with these guys on YouTube, it just comes down to race. 
they're upset because there's not a black fighter who's at number one and there's not enough black fighters on the list they harken back to older lists that were dominated by black fighters but yet I went back and showed you if you go back to the 80s and 90s there's plenty of lists that are mixed with small fighters from Asia who are fighting in these lower weight divisions there's tons of small fighters like Ricardo Lopez and others who were not really big names in America but obviously were considered superstar fighters and lower weight fighters that were on the pound for pound list you had tons of Mexican fighters and other fighters ranked in the top 10 as well and you had plenty of fighters that weren't black American who were considered pound for pound number one so you know has anything really changed outside of the fact that now currently boxing is far more global than it's ever been and that's just a reality because you know now we're getting obviously a lot more representation from these communist countries who historically didn't join the pro ranks because all you could see them was every four years in the olympics right whether it was the russian countries which obviously now have separated and now you have kazakhstan uzbekistan russia ukraine these countries used to all be russia but now obviously they have their own identity um, and now they have fighters that are fighting professional. You have more Cubans now fighting professional than you've had since probably prior to when? I'm trying to think when Cuba was sort of like the Vegas of America. And at that time you did have Cuban fighters fighting in pro boxing. But that was after when? I think before World War II probably post World War One, after the booming 20s, sometime in the 30s, I think. Uh, I could be wrong historically, but it was sometime around there where Cuba was obviously turned into a communist country, dictatorship, uh, and at that point, Cuban fighters no longer were able to become professional. So now you just have far more representation. It's obviously represented in these pound for pound lists. And for a boxing fan, I think that's great. We just saw a newie today sign a deal with Turkey al Sheik to be sponsored by, uh, you know, Riyadh Season. And apparently worth $15 million. So that's great. A small fighter like a newie getting a guaranteed from Saudi Arabia. Obviously, you know, this might mean that he's going to be fighting in Saudi Arabia in 2025 on Riyadh Season. So that would be fantastic. Uh, obviously a newie right now is whew, you know his career is really booming and, and for some reason this threatens people and I don't understand why it would threaten people you should be happy that boxers are doing great getting paid well and, and it's not just American boxers but it's literally boxers all over the world Daniel Dubois just ended up scoring a sensational knockout really making him one of the top heavyweights in boxing beating Anthony Joshua uh, you know a lot of great things are going on in the sport of boxing, but unfortunately, some people are just such haters that it doesn't matter. They're always going to somehow try to twist and turn things to push the same old narrative that we've been hearing for the last 10 years. And that shit's old. Old. Because primarily it's coming from Americans. Disgruntled American fans. Primarily disgruntled black American fans. And... and I don't know why these guys are disgruntled. It's not our fault that your fighters are inactive and, and not taking on big challenges and not trying to be great, right? Like I saw somebody defending the fact that many Americans are not that active and, and so, you know, them not being active means they're fighting great quality, great quality, great quality. One of the negatives towards Tank Davis is the fact that he's not fighting great quality. Uh, Shakur Stevenson was just scheduled to fight his second fighter in a row coming off of a loss. Is that great quality? Fighting guys coming off of losses? I, I mean, great quality. <laughs> you know, uh, you look at the PBC fighters, and they've been really inactive. Tons of fighters haven't had one fight in 2024, and a lot of them have only had one fight. You know, that's not because of quality. It's because lack of funding lack of support from their promoters you know obviously some people have injuries that they've dealt with and, and that's obviously been an issue but then you have people like 
Errol Spence. Where's he been? We've been talking about Errol Spence coming back to fight Fonduro for six months already. And it doesn't look like that fight's any closer to happening now than it was six months ago. But this is because Errol Spence is taking on quality. When did Fonduro turn into quality? But okay, <laughs> you know, it, it's amazing the, the pushback people have just because of their own emotions. But let me know what you think. Uh, leave it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Was this pound for pound list quality? Do you think anything was out of whack? Was there any big names that were missing from this list that should be added? Thanks for watching. See you next time.